Hello, everybody. Today, we have a very special segment of Disclosure, something we've never done before, but something that you all asked for over and over and over again. Now, part one, two, three, and four, you all know featured a man who we call Ray. Of course, that's not his real name, but he would like to remain anonymous. So the name that we gave him is Ray. But over the past few months, a lot of you asked me if it would be possible to interview somebody else from TLS, somebody else from the organization that may bring a whole different perspective. And at first I laughed at the question because I thought something like that would be impossible because it was already hard enough to get Ray to step up and agree to doing an interview. But the more of you who asked, the more times I was asked to ask if that was possible in the first place, I really came to a point where I just said, what do I have to lose? So I asked and I persisted and I do what I usually do. And to my surprise, the answer was yes. It's a great honor and privilege to be able to be sitting here with another incredible human being, a woman in this case, from TLS, from the organization itself. Although her real name cannot be revealed, all TLS agents do have code names and hers is the Black Widow. All I can tell you is that she lives in the United States. She's a mother and she does absolutely incredible work behind the scenes for TLS and with TLS. So with that being said, I want to thank you for being here and thank you for agreeing to this interview and thank you for giving us your time. Of course, my pleasure. I want to start by asking you first and foremost, why did you agree to doing this interview? Well, I'm not really a big talker. I am usually working behind the scenes, but as a TLS member, I've been following your work. I think you're doing a great job, especially in the last few years. And I wanted to show you my support because you asked so nicely and I agreed to this interview just because I'm very proud of you. I think you're doing an amazing job and I want to be a part of your success. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have to get any permission or approval in order to be sitting here in the first place? Oh, absolutely. Everything I do, I have to get permission from Ray, from the boss above Ray, and to be a part of something like this that I'm disclosing on your platform, I have to get approved for something like this. I cannot just do it, like to decide myself that I want to do it. When you say the boss above Ray, who are we speaking about? Oh, we're talking about the head of the New York chapter of the TLS organization. Um, we call her D, but I, I can't give her full name. D like the letter D. Mm -hmm, yes. I understand that Ray has covered up his identity for privacy concerns, security concerns, out of his own choice, really, because we both know that he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. But what's your reason for choosing to cover your identity? Hmm. Well, first of all, I have a family. I'm a mother. I have kids and I have to protect my kids. They're still young. I have to protect my family, the organization. Ray, of course. I, I cannot expose myself. Ray has a choice. He can expose himself. But for me, it's not a choice. I, I cannot and I'm not allowed to expose myself. Do you know why? No, actually, I don't. But I'm assuming because my kids are very young and I don't think they could handle something like this. Not yet. Um, so I think it's just basically to protect my family. How long have you been working with TLS? I would say um, a little bit more than 10 years. Can you tell us around when and how you were approached? Uh, yes. Actually, it started um, maybe a little more than 10 years ago. It was a very regular routine for me. I was sitting in my house watching the news and I saw a story on the news about a woman and her family who needed help. So I decided to approach her husband and her family to help her. And I helped them for, for a month. And after about a month, Ray 
who was well known in the community. Um, I knew of him, but I didn't know him. Uh, he approached me and he started talking to me about this woman that I was helping. And a few months after, when I was sitting with myself, I realized that that was basically my first mission without even knowing. I was just sitting at home watching the news and I saw this story and I decided to help her. But I didn't even know that it would lead to something totally different. So, like I said, after about a month that I was helping her, he approached me and he started talking to me about about her and I was really surprised and we both helped her together. And I think, I think that this was, I mean, I know, I know this was our first mission together to help this woman and we succeeded and I'm really glad we did, but we worked really well together and it was like kind of a test maybe without me even knowing that this was the test to see how we work together. It was it was really amazing. Did you know who Ray was when he approached you? I knew of him. I didn't know him personally, but I heard about him because he's, he's a very well-known person in the community. He helps a lot of people. And I heard about people that he had helped, but I didn't, I never met him personally before that. It was more or less 10, 11 years ago, something like that. Now, today, over the past 10, 11 years, mm -hmm. up until today, what type of work do you do for the organization? I started to do physical work in the beginning because um, I had a few issues that I had to resolve within myself. And then after a lot of work and help, I got to a point where I could also do spiritual work because it's all connected. Like you can't be in a low or complicated place in your life if you want to do spiritual work and you want to be, um, you need to be more clean in your mind and in your soul. And then to connect to yourself and do spiritual work. And now, now I'm doing both physical and spiritual work together. But I started only with physical work. Did you receive help from the organization to go through this process of healing, inner healing and opening yourself up? Absolutely. Absolutely. I did. I got all the help I needed. There were issues that I had to solve, most of it by myself, but I got a lot of support from Rig and a lot of support from TLS. And I'm glad to say that it was a big success. And after like a year or two, I was in a totally different place. You mentioned you have kids, you have a family. The next question is, do you get paid for your work? Mm, I actually do. I'm different than Ray because Ray has another source of income and, and I don't. My kids are still young. I have to support them. I have to support my family and TLS. Basically, the work with TLS takes a really big part of my day and I have to, I'm getting paid to support my kids and my family. Does your work ever require you to have to travel to different countries, different states? Yes. Can you elaborate on some examples? Um, I travel, let's say, three to five times a year. It's a short period of time, like a few days, sometimes in the United States, sometimes out of the United States. It must be very hard. I mean, having to be a mother to children, raising a family. Does your family know what you really do? Well, my family doesn't know what I do, but it's not harder than any other moms I know. We live in a very small community and we're a very nice neighborhood. And all the moms surrounding me are working moms. And I'm not, I'm not different from them. 
but sometimes it's challenging a little bit, but something that is totally doable. Your kids don't know what you really do. No. What do they think you do? Um, I prefer not to answer that. That's my cover basically. And I prefer not to answer and not to give away my cover. So there is something that they think you do in terms of your day to day job and you just do something else. Yeah. It's, it's like any other mom who goes to work nine to five, but they think I do one thing and I'm doing something else. Did you ever have to relocate for work purposes? Yeah. Yes, I have. But when I did the relocation with my family, TLS and Ray completely supported me. They helped me in every way that I needed. My kids now have a great neighborhood, great schools, and I got all the support that I needed when I was relocated. I want to ask you a question about a date that I've been speaking about very publicly over the past year and a half to two years. The day that I was actually kind of formally invited to, I guess we can call it a TLS meeting. It lasted about 12 hours on February 6th of 2020, a meeting that kind of marked the date that I was somewhat informally brought into the organization because I'm not an initiated member whatsoever. My question for you is, did you have any part in the decision-making process of making that meeting happen and bringing me into it? Mm -hmm. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, I was, as I said at the beginning, as a part of TLS, I was following all your work and everything you did and your progress. And I absolutely supported the fact that you were going to be there and that you were going to be in the meeting and be a part of it and start a process. So before February 6th of 2020, I didn't really have any form of a public platform. Is it safe to say that you or others or you and others were sort of following me and watching me in my day to day? Mm, absolutely. The answer is yes. Is it safe to assume that you knew about me before I knew about you? Yes. Are we talking days, weeks, months, years? We're talking years, but I don't really want to get into it. But it was years that we've been following you and known about you. Before moving on, I have one last question about that. At that point, I was, what, like 22 years old? What made you have any form of faith in me, somebody that comes from a real estate background, somebody that has no experience with public speaking? Why did you choose to support pretty much a kid coming out and speaking out about such a powerful organization? Well... It's not really about the age or what you do for a living. It's something more about your energy, your soul. And it has nothing to do with your age. And you personally are, today you are 25 years old. But you're not 25 years old. You're much more mature than that. You have experience. Uh, you're a great speaker. And the fact that you came from real estate, it doesn't really, it's not an issue. It's like something that was in your energy, your soul, and the hope that you had and the future that you saw for a better world. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Let's move on to your relationship with Ray, because I think a lot of people would like to know how you and Ray kind of work together. Ray has shared a lot of his own experiences from within the organization, but to get those experiences or whichever experiences you did share from your perspective would be really interesting. So first and foremost, who is Ray to you within the organization? Ray is sort of my boss. You could call it. There is a boss above Ray. Of course, but he's more my direct handler, you could say. Um, I take all direction and everything for the work that we have from him, directly from him. 
Do you know him only through work or are you on a more personal level with him? Um, absolutely. On a personal level today and uh, the last few years, we became like partners, good friends, and like you can say family. Do you know his family? I do. I know his family. I know his whole family. Does his family know you? They know me, but they don't know what I do. So you're undercover even within the relationship with him known to his family? Yes. The only person who knows who I am and what I do is his wife. Why did the two of you work together? Mm, that's a good question. I think we spoke about the first mission that I had, and I, I didn't know it was a mission. I just saw a story and, and wanted to help. I think that it was kind of a test to test if we could work together. Like our energy, both our energies worked really, really well together. Think of, think about yourself, like on a daily basis, you go, you meet someone. Sometimes you get a good connection after two seconds and sometimes you dislike them. And it's, it's all about energies. You know, you, you can work with someone when your energy is perfectly flowing together. And some people, you have it with them for no specific reason. And some people you don't. So me and Ray, we work very, very good together. And it was like a perfect match with our energy. We think the same. We act the same. We can do stuff together without even saying it out loud. We just do it together and it worked perfectly for both of us. Are there ever any instances where you have to work with anybody else within the organization? No. Could it be a group effort where it's you, Ray, and other individuals? Absolutely. In fact, most of the time that we go to missions and trips, we're not alone. Um, sometimes we have a short period of time that we have to do things together and we, and it's only us, but all of our trips were surrounded with more people from TLS for backup for, for other things too. But we're most of the time we're with other people. Now, when you say with other people, or we talking about five people, 10 people, a hundred people, how big can this get? Well, it depends. Sometimes it's like four people. Sometimes it's 30. It depends on the mission and the tasks that we have. Speaking about missions and operations, Ray has shared a lot of details about operations and missions that he was a part of regarding TLS, regarding the underground tunnel systems, regarding induced natural disasters, all these things that he was a part of in many ways stopping. Were you a part of any of those specific operations with the underground tunnel system or induced natural disasters? Hmm. Well, as a mom, the operation with the tunnels and saving the kids was something that I really, really, really wanted to do. But Ray would not even consider for me to come because he had a responsibility to my kids, for my family. And as much as I offered to join the operation, he said, absolutely not. He wouldn't take the chance. So you have to understand that in every task in TLS, there's a scale of one to 10. One is the lowest risk and 10 is the highest risk. And I can tell you that Ray, he takes a lot of risks that are like on the higher levels, but he never lets me do it. Never. The highest level I ever joined him on was, um, I can say a three or a four. That was the highest level. The tunnels was something I really wanted to do, but I wasn't a part of it. And what about when it came to the so-called natural disasters? Well, some of them Ray did that by himself. And some of them, I was part of it. More on the spiritual level, which I didn't have to physically be in the actual place to help and make the change. That means that spiritually speaking, you're doing something without actually being there. Exactly. Earlier, you said you work in both the physical side of the organization and the spiritual side of the organization, something that you kind of 
have gone between over the past 10, 11 years of your work within the organization. What do you predominantly do today? Is it more physically oriented or spiritually oriented? Hmm. I would say it's 50% physical and 50% spiritual. Can you give any examples of jobs, tasks, operations that you've been on, maybe in different countries that you've done that show both the physical side and the spiritual side? Let's start with the physical side and then we'll go into the spiritual. Well, the physical side, I would say to distract someone. Um, I'll give you an example. We spoke about the movie that you actually brought to my attention, The Adjustment Bureau. There was an actor, Harry. He was supposed to spill coffee on David's shirt at exactly 7.05 a.m. to make a chain of reactions to change something in his day. So this is something that I would do. That is something that I actually do. TLS will send me, uh, they'll fly me out to a different country for five minutes to distract someone and then come back. When you say for five minutes, you're saying that they'll fly you all the way to God knows where a different country to do a job for five minutes and come back. Yes, mm -hmm, that happens. Why you and not just hire or use one of their 84, 8,500 agents that are in that area of the world? I guess it's something that is connected to your energy, um, to your look. You know, think about yourself sitting in a restaurant and suddenly you hear like a glass falling on the floor and breaking. You'll turn around and sometimes you will, for a split second, be distracted. You'll look and then you'll go back to your meal. So sometimes something will, you know, distract you more and, and make you look for a few more minutes and this will cause a chain of reactions different than what was actually going to happen. You have to remember that everything that we do is for a good reason. We, we don't do stuff like that to make a bad reaction, a, a bad chain reaction, only, only for good. You mentioned the movie that I told you to watch. It's actually one of my favorite movies, The Adjustment Bureau. Would you say that TLS works in somewhat of the same way as the Adjustment Bureau organization works in that movie? Uh, absolutely. When you told me that you watched this movie and then I watched it also, it was very similar to the things that we do in TLS. So it, it made me understand that you understand the essence of the work TLS is doing. Can you give some other examples now on the spiritual side of operations, tasks, jobs that you've done around the world that shows a spiritual task that you had to take upon yourself? Hmm. A perfect example is a few years ago, TLS sent us to Canada to, you won't believe it, to stop the electricity for a few seconds. What part of Canada are we talking about? It was Niagara Falls. And when you say to stop the electricity, you're using this example as a spiritual task. How did you go about doing something like that? Well, we actually used a physical tool, but in a spiritual way. Can you elaborate? I prefer not to. In short, you have access to tools that you use that help you, what, like connect spiritually? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that spiritual connection allows you to do things like stopping electricity for a certain purpose, for whatever the purpose of that mission was. Mm -hmm, exactly. Can you give any other examples of spiritual tasks and operations that you've been a part of? Well, not too many because you can understand that all the missions, most of them are something that we we really don't talk about, but we went to, um, we've, we've been sent to a country in the Middle East. We, we had to stop a storm and it was also something that we did in a spiritual way. We were actually in a helicopter and we were actually in the sky when we did what we did. 
And we also use a certain physical tool to do something spiritual. So another example, and I'm sorry, I I know I'm, I'm not giving you too much information, but you have to understand that I'm sitting here and uh, talking to you, but I have to be very careful with what I say because I can't really give too many details. And um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But um, it's something that you must understand, and, and I, I'm sure you do. So we went to Utah also a few years ago. We had a mission over there. And we actually had a mission, but something happened on the way, which was very, we thought it was something that, that wasn't the reason that we were there and it just happened. And there was actually a boy that almost fell from a cliff. You're talking about Horseshoe Bend. Yes. Mm -hmm. By Utah, Arizona. Exactly. I know you know the story. We were there for something else. And... We thought we did what we did. And then something like just came along and we were there in the right place at the right time. But when the ambulance came and the police came and everyone came after we helped this kid, we suddenly saw on the plate number a number that we use in TLS. So me and Ray and the person that was with us, we understood this wasn't a coincidence. We were there for a reason. We didn't even know. We didn't plan it, but there was a reason that we were there. Have you ever experienced any form of, I guess we can call all of this supernatural, Mm -hmm. but any form of supernatural abilities that happened to you or that you did throughout an operation that you're able to share. Things like, I don't know, telepathic communication, levitation. Mm. Yeah, these things these things that you're that you're talking about, we don't we don't do those most of the time, but I have a few experiences with levitation. It actually happened when me and Ray were in two different countries. We used telepathy and we did it in two different countries. And this, this was on the spiritual level. And this, this happened only a few years after I met Ray, because I needed to be in a different place. Like I said before, I needed to be in a different place spiritually, clean with my soul and and the blocks that I had that I had to let go of. And then I was able to do more spiritual things like levitation, telepathy, and stuff like that. Did you ever get hurt doing or experiencing any of those abilities? I actually did. (laughs) We did a levitation and um, we were in two different countries and something went wrong. And I actually fell from the ceiling. (laughs) I, and I was definitely injured, but, but not too much. It, 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 it wasn't that bad. I had like black and blues a little bit. And I, I told my family that I fell on my way to work, but it wasn't that bad. It was, it was okay. And it was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. Good. Absolutely. That, that's all that matters. I understand that everyone in the organization uses code names. You have a code name, Ray has a code name. Everybody has a code name. What's the purpose of those names? Do you use those names when you're on an operation to speak to one another? Well, when when we're on an operation, that would be very weird. I mean, think about it. If you go in the street and you hear two people calling the Black Widow, or, you know, it, it would get too much attention. So we don't use them. We use our names, but it's something for the organization that they use at certain times. But personally, we don't use them when we're on a mission. We don't use the code names. So why do they call you the Black Widow? That name was given to me. By who? By the boss. Who's the boss? 
I told you before. Um, we call her D, and she's the head of the New York chapter. What's Ray's code name? The CO. Can you tell us what it stands for? No. Can you give us any other examples of code names within the organization? Mm, we have the Eagle. We have the BA, which stands for Born Again. We have the BB, which stands for Blind Baby. <laughs> Why? Where do these names come from? <laughs> well, it's not my decision. I, I didn't give these names. I just know what it stands for and the code name and which code name goes to who. But I didn't give this name. It's the boss, the one who gave me my name. I have a few closing questions for you, big picture questions for you that I asked Ray in multiple past interviews, Disclosure Part 1, 2, 3, and 4. I want to ask you the questions to gain a new perspective, a fresh perspective from a different individual from within the organization that still has a lot of experiences that most people don't. So my first question for you is, number one, I think we can both agree that Ray is very impatient. He has certain ways that he wants to go about doing certain things to really stop a lot of the evil in this world. And of course, he comes from a very good place with very good intentions. He does have a very extreme way of doing things. And as he said many times, he wants to eliminate the evildoers. And TLS doesn't allow him to go through with certain things because they don't want their actions or actions from anybody associated with them to interfere with free will of the human collective. So what is your perspective on really getting rid of evil in this world? Do you agree with Ray? Do you have a different way of going about it? What's your overall perspective from your stance? So as a person who knows Ray very well, I know that everything he wants to do and they won't let him, it, it's all for the better. He has a really good heart. He's an amazing man who helps so many people. And most of the time, people he helps don't even know that he's behind the help they're getting. But uh, I'm a woman and I'm a little bit different. I'm a mother. I'm a little bit less extreme. And I know there is a solution for us, you know, to make this world a better place to live. Man, it's just going to be a little bit longer and we need to be more patient. It's going to be more complicated, but we can get there as a human being on earth. We can get there. So I understand Ray and where he's coming from, but I think we should challenge ourselves and take high road. Yep. Not easy, but we can get there. When it comes to religion, a lot of people ask about religion and how God fits into this greater picture because Ray has said multiple times that he's against religion and many members and agents within TLS are not fond of organized religion either. But they do use things like the Bible and Kabbalah and the Zohar to do many, many different things in action in the field throughout their operations. When it comes to religion, organized religion as we know it today, what is your perspective on how it fits into the greater picture, spiritually speaking? Well, I have to be honest. As a person who read Rays of Light many times, I do understand what the rabbi is saying about religion. Whatever divides us as human beings just cannot be that good. Um, and I'm being very careful with choosing my words because I was raised in a certain way as a kid and I'm raising my kids in a similar way and a little less tradition than I was raised in, but it, it is all connected to a religion and I see how religion divides us as people. And I do understand that the hope is 
that one day we are all going to be above all the religions that divide us and we'll all be more moving and acting out of love and not out of the other things that make us, um, well, think about it. The rabbi in Rays of Light, he's saying if there will be no religion, there will be no war and there would be only love. And this is something I want for my kids and for the future generations to live in a place without war and to be surrounded only with love. I think it's a hope and a dream of all parents, you know, whoever they are and whatever religion they have. It's something that we all should want to try to accomplish on earth. The thing is, a lot of people find purpose in their religion. They feel that religion gives them a purpose because it gives them a very clear path and way to connect to what we all call God, this higher realm, this higher dimension. Everybody has a different way of defining that idea. How do you think this world is going to evolve? How do you think this world is going to look like as we become more spiritually oriented and connected as opposed to religiously oriented and connected? Well, you have to understand that I really, really respect the people, the religious people, the people that are not even religious, just traditional, who need something to give them hope, to give them strength. And most, most of the people, when they find religion, it's because they've had a bad experience. So they first approach and go to prayer and to God through religion. But I think that love is the only thing that is above all of the religions. This is the only thing that can, uh, hmm. Religion basically divides the people on earth and love is the only thing that brings people together. And if you read Rays of Light, the rabbi explained very, very simply about love, that love has so much power. It's the strongest feeling that can bring everyone together and bring this earth and this place to a better future for our kids which every parent and every mother and every person wants for their kids and for their future generations. With all the chaos and I'll even say the darkness and evil that we experience around our world today and that we see around our world today, do you have any faith and knowingness within you that we will get to that world that you're speaking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. The awareness today is amazing. People are starting to open their eyes to understand that if they are not going to make a big change in their life, the world is going to be a place that none of us want to live in. And a lot of people now are, are more aware, more awakened and uh, I know I have faith and I have hope that with the help of TLS, with the help of people like you, with the help of people like Ray, we can do it. We can do it. And we can give our kids and their kids a better future here. To sum up this entire interview. I'm going to ask you what I always ask Ray. Do you have any closing message that you'd like to deliver to everybody who's watching this interview to leave us off on the note that you want to leave us all off on? Hmm. Very simple. I said it and, and I'm going to say it again. Wake up every day in the morning and decide that you will do one good deed for someone else not yourself, and you will see, all of you will see that it will take your life to a better place and will give you such big satisfaction. 
and it will lead us all to the place that we deserve to live in. I completely agree. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. My pleasure. I hope to see you again if that opportunity comes to fruition. And if there's more that you'd like to share down the line, if there's more that you're able to share. But I really just want to say thank you. And I appreciate you for even agreeing to make this happen in the first place. You're welcome, Jason. You have to understand that I'm very limited in the things that I actually can talk about and say, but I'm very proud of you. And I want you to continue and do exactly what you're doing because you're a big help for humanity. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. That brings this segment of Disclosure, Disclosure Part 5, to an official close. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know this one was very different than all the rest because you actually have a different person sitting in front of you this time, a different person sitting in front of me. And I really want to close this interview by saying thank you to each and every one of you because it's your push to me that made this happen in the first place. I'm just that soldier and medium that gets all the ideas that you all give me and you guys really give me that ambition and motivation and drive to keep moving forward with all of this. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that have been a part of this journey up until now. Thank you for supporting this. Thank you for sharing this far and wide because this series has been seen by millions of people around the world. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And I thank you all for just being the incredible individuals who you are in this world. We're in this together. And as I always say, divided we fall, united we fly. Thank you very much.